All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how to name substances. And you may recall from one of an earlier lectures that a substance is either an element or a molecule where all you have is just that. You have nothing else but that particular substance. And as such, you deal with a pure substance. When you start mixing them together is when you get into the situation of dealing with mixtures. But focusing on the pure substances, they do classify themselves into subdivisions. There are the elements and then the compounds. And the elements are simply just the elements by themselves. But even within that simple of a definition, you uh, have two extra subcategories. You have the atomic elements and then you have the molecular elements. So let's start by talking about the molecular elements. When you look at the periodic table, there is a segment of elements or a, a handful of elements that you need to be aware of. Specifically, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. I'm even including acetine for this discussion. And I'm even going to toss in phosphorus and sulfur, but the ones in yellow are probably the most important ones. These elements, the reason I'm highlighting them is because when they are present by themselves, even though they are elements, they are actually present as molecules. We call these things diatomic molecules, so H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. That's the actual identity of those elements in their pure form. Um, in the case of phosphorus and sulfur, we have specific versions of them that can take up four atoms or eight atoms. That one, I'm going to be a little bit more mellow about uh, having you memorize. The ones in yellow, I do need you to remember. And uh, in particular, I also need you to remember that H2, N2O2, F2, and Cl2 are gases. So not only are they diatomic, they are gases. Bromine, on the other hand, with the two subscript right there, so Br2 is a liquid, and I2 as well as At2, those two are solids. And one way to remember them is by the mnemonic Hofbrinkel where each letter stands for an element. H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, F for fluorine, Br for bromine, I for iodine, N for nitrogen, and Cl for chlorine. Those are your diatomic elements. And I'm even, I'm even adding the PS at half wrinkle to remind you of phosphorus, sulfur, and astatine. All right, those are the molecular elements. And the atomic elements are pretty much everything else other than the ones that I just highlighted. The atomic elements are elements that will be just present when you write them in a formula just by the symbol, right? So if you're dealing with iron, you just write Fe. You're not going to write Fe2 or Fe4. It's just going to be Fe. If you are dealing with strontium, you will just write Sr. Uh, the only ones you have to be really aware of when dealing with a pure element are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Well, and hydrogen, right? So those are the big ones that will be present as molecules. The way you name elements is by the most part recalling their names. And um, as long as you're dealing with just the element, that's the story. You just have to remember the name of the element. But if you are dealing with one of the molecular elements, you have to use prefixes to say how many of them you have. And the prefixes we're going to be using start with two atoms, in which case the prefix is di, three atoms is tri, four atoms is tetra, and from there on out, if you have more than four atoms present uh, of the same element, then you use the prefixes that you would use for polygons, so penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca, for five through ten elements present. So when you look at the various list of elements here, you just have to recall their names. Uh, BA, aluminum, excuse me, BA, AL, and C, you'll have to remember them as barium, aluminum, carbon. The next three elements are sulfur, hydrogen, and nitrogen, but you have to specify their amounts. By using prefixes, sulfur is present as 8, so you will call it octasulfur. Notice that I'm using the prefix prior to the name of the element. Then you have a two for hydrogen, so this will be dihydrogen, and two for nitrogen, 
known as dinitrogen. This is the proper way to call them. Often people just refer to them as just hydrogen and nitrogen because that's the common state, but this is the proper way of referring to them. All right, now that's the story for the elements. Let's take a look at the compounds. These are actually molecules where you have two or more different atoms or different elements together in the molecule. This is to be contrasted with the molecular elements that only had multiple elements of the same kind. So let's take a look first at the molecular compounds. Now by definition, molecular compounds are those that contain two or more different elements of uh, different kinds. But these two elements or this you know, multitude of elements have to be non-metals. And when you look at the periodic table, the way you tell whether you're dealing with a non-metal or not is by focusing, uh, first of all, hydrogen, that one you're going to have to remember, that's a non-metal. But looking at this diagonal here in green, if you start from boron and go all the way to tellurium and include the underneath diagonal from germanium to polonium, technically speaking, this green diagonal is what we call the semi-metals. Anything to the right of the semi-metals plus hydrogen is considered a non-metal. And everything else to the left, aside from hydrogen, is considered a metal. So what you can see here is that the vast majority of the periodic table is made out of metals. Um, and about 20 to 25% is considered non-metals. Now for the point of view of what we're going to be doing in this class, I'll even consider the green segment except for polonium. So everything here in green minus polonium along with all the pink stuff is what I will consider non-metals. All right, now here is where we're going to really get into the, the thick of the nomenclature. One thing though that I should highlight is that there are certain elements that you are definitely required to memorize and remember by name and by symbol. You need to know the elements in group A from hydrogen down to cesium. You need to know the elements from beryllium down to barium. In group two, you need to know boron, aluminum, you need to know carbon, silicon, tin, and lead. You need to know nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Those are some of the big ones. And then when it comes down to the transition metals, the elements here in the middle, the ones that we're going to be looking into are going to be chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, cadmium, and mercury, silver, and gold. Okay, so basically groups 11B and 12B, followed by, you know, chromium all the way up to zinc. Those are the main ones. Uh, not to say that I won't touch upon the other elements from time to time, but the ones that I absolutely need you and want you to know the names and symbols are the ones that I just mentioned. Chromium through zinc, groups 11B, 12B, Groups 1A, 2A, uh, boron, aluminum, carbon, silicon, tin, lead, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and then the halogens. All right, now, digging, digging deeper into the classifications. Within the compounds, there are molecular compounds, the ones that are only made up of non-metals. And within the molecular compounds, we have those that are binary. Specifically, these are compounds that contain only non-metals, but you only have two different kinds of elements, no more than two different kinds. And the way you name such molecules is by depicting how many of them you have present. You're only going to have two. Uh, so you're going to name the first element, and if you have it present in an amount other than one, you're going to have to tell the amount of that element using prefixes. And the second element that appears in your formula, you're going to also depict it with a prefix to tell what it is. And not only that, but you will end it with a suffix IDE. In some cases, you will have to remove some of the ending letters and replace them with IDE for this to work out. All right, so here are the prefixes and I'm even going to include the one for having a single element which is mono. I'll tell you in a second when you're going to be using that. But as I was saying here you're going to remove for some elements the 
final letters and replacing with IDE, specifically if the element ends with OGen, like oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, you're going to get rid of OGen and you're going to replace it with IDE. If the element ends with in, like bromine or chlorine or fluorine, you're going to remove that and replace it with IDE if it's the second element in the binary molecular compound. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples. What you can see here is that each one of these elements, or, uh, excuse me, each one of these compounds have two different kinds of element. It has nitrogen or oxygen, or it has phosphorus and oxygen, or it has hydrogen and nitrogen, or it has chlorine and fluorine, or bromine and oxygen, or iodine and bromine, two different kinds of elements. Mind you, the amounts are more than two for some of them, but that's not at all what I'm referring to when I say two different kinds of elements. When I refer to that, I really don't mean do you have only nitrogen or do you have nitrogen and some other element? And if that's the case, you're dealing with a binary compound. Now, all of these elements are not metals, meaning that you're dealing with a molecular binary compound. So we're going to name them. We have two nitrogens on the first element, and the first element is nitrogen, so we will call this dinitrogen. Then we have four oxygens present at the end, so we call this tetra, but we don't call it tetraoxygen, we call it tetraoxide, because we're going to remove the oxygen ending, and we're going to add IDE, so tetraoxide. Alright, over here we have uh, four phosphorus atoms, so we call this tetraphosphorus. And we have 10 oxygens, so we will call this decaoxide. Sometimes you even drop the A and you call it decoxide. Um, I'm kind of lenient on that, whether you use decaoxide or decoxide. Now the next one, you have hydrogen and N. Now I'm going to show you a few compounds in a little bit that start with, nit with hydrogen, and, and you have to be careful about those. So this one is a bit of a gray area uh, in regards to what I'm going to talk next. But here you only have one hydrogen, so you'll just say hydrogen. In fact, even though you have the prefix mono, you do not want to use the prefix mono for the first element. If anything, you'll use mono for the second element, and even then under one specific condition. All right, so this will just be hydrogen, followed by three nitrogens, and you have to drop in the ogen ending, so this will be trinitride. So hydrogen, trinitride. All right, next we have ClF3. 1 Cl, 3 Fs, Cl is chlorine, so we just say chlorine, and then we have 3 fluorines, but we drop the in and we call it now fluoride, so if this is chlorine, try fluoride. Next, we have 1 Br with 2 Os, so this is called bromine dioxide, not oxygen, but oxide, so bromine dioxide, so get rid of the Ogen, replace it with IDE. And lastly, for this molecule that notice, we have, they're both covalent, excuse me, they're both non-metals. Uh, and you only have two kinds of elements. So you'll call the first thing iodine, but the second one, you actually have to specify how many of the second one you have. And so you must call this particular molecule iodine monobromide, not iodine bromide. All right, now, this brings me to the next point that I was implying earlier on, that there are certain binary molecular compounds that you have to be on the lookout for. There are compounds that start with an H, and I kind of depicted the one with the gray area. If the compound starts with an H, and it is a binary molecular compound, it could be that you're dealing with an acid, a binary acid to be most exact. And the way of naming acidic substances um, it's a little bit different than the way we name the binary compounds. First of all, you have to have non-metals only, and the first element has to be hydrogen for this to qualify as potentially being an acid. All right, so what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna use IDE for the acids. Instead, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna change the naming a little bit. We're gonna use the prefix hydro to take the role of IDE. And as a suffix, we're gonna have ic acid. All right, now, specifically for the binary compounds, you are to name them as acids if these two criteria are met. First of all, the very first element is hydrogen. And secondly, you have the AQ symbol. If those two criteria are met, you 
how to name this molecule as an acid. So what you call this would be hydro, and since the element, the second element is chlorine, this would be hydrochloric acid. So once again, drop the in from the end and replace it with ic acid. So this is hydrochloric acid. The next one, you start with hydrogen. They're both not metals. The second thing is AQ, so this is an acid. You will call it hydro. The second element is sulfur. So here it's a little bit a little bit tricky. Uh, you gotta drop the UR ending as well. And this will be called hydrosulfuric acid. Actually, you're not dropping the UR, you're keeping it there. What am I talking about? Yes, yeah, so hydrosulfuric acid. Uh, the next one. Um, we already looked at, but I'm putting the AQ symbol. And if you were to name it, uh, it would be a little bit tricky. In fact, this one has a common name that you guys probably don't know. So I'm just going to tell you what it is so that you're aware of it. Uh, but probably you will not be seeing this molecule again until you handle uh, biomolecules for which this becomes a you know, perfect buffer. This is called hydroacidic acid. All right, and the next one, HI with AQ, that's an acid. This is hydro iodic acid next one even though it doesn't quite qualify as a binary the cn is treated as being one unit for this particular compound uh, and that unit is uh, cyanide so this whole thing is called hydrocyanic acid and the last one hf this is with the aq symbol a binary acid so we call it hydrofluoric acid all right now one extra thing that i need to highlight to you if any of these molecules didn't have the AQ symbol, then you will have to revert back to calling them the normal way. And unlike some of the things I told you before, if the second element is only present in one amount, in the absence of AQ, uh, you're going to revert back to using IDE. But you will not say hydrogen monochloride, you will just say hydrogen chloride. The same way that you will say here hydrogen or dihydrogen sulfide. And the same way that you will call this hydrogen iodide, hydrogen cyanide, and hydrogen fluoride if the AQ symbol is not present. So just be aware of that. The AQ is a prerequisite for you to call this as an acid. All right, in the next video, we're going to talk about polyatomic molecular compounds. So see you then.